Hi, my name is Emily Tianchi, and I'm 17 years old. Hi everyone, my name is Kyle Tianchi, and I'm 14 years old. We're from San Diego, California. I invented an atmospheric moisture harvesting device by a mimic from the Tory pine tree to help areas in drought. And I designed a microscopic particle detector using a laser and a raspberry pi to combat microplastic contamination. We co-founded Clearwater Innovation, an organization that raises awareness of the global water crisis and encourages students to conduct environmental research from garage labs. We're so grateful to the city of Cupertino for giving us this opportunity to present on Earth Day. And we're going to share with you a little bit more about our projects and our journey as environmental advocates. Hello, so I'm here to talk about my research project, which is biomimicking Tory pine needles, atmospheric moisture harvesting device through alternating hydrophilic and hydrophobic micro patterns. I know it sounds very complicated, but don't worry, I'll break it down for you. So I live really close to Torrey Pine State Natural Reserve. My family and I go hiking there all the time. And as a kid growing up in California's drought, I noticed that there were these gigantic puddles under the Torrey Pine tree, as you can see in this picture right here. So I asked the rangers, you know, what's going on? Everything's dry, but you know, there's just like a giant puddle right there. And they said that Torrey Pine needles are really well known for their ability to harvest atmospheric moisture. So you can see these little droplets of water right there on this needle but no one has really explored it before. So when I got to the eighth grade, I was super curious and I decided to start my own research project, trying to find how Torrey pine needles are able to harvest so much moisture. I did a lot of experiments, found out a lot of really interesting things, but this is one of my biggest results. Um, this is a zoomed in picture of the Torrey pine needle. You can see that there are rows of tiny little white dots. Those are called stomata. They're pores for gas exchange. And in between them are green parts, which is what I like to call the ridges. Something is hydrophilic when it's water loving. So uh, like a piece of paper would be hydrophilic and something is hydrophobic when it's water fearing. So wax would be hydrophobic. And you figure out if something is hydrophilic or hydrophobic by putting a droplet of water on it and looking at its contact angle, like in this photo right here. The smaller the contact angle, like this needle, the more hydrophilic a surface is. So the toy pine needle is hydrophilic, which is pretty unique to uh, uh, pine needles. I discovered that within this, on a microscopic level, the white little spots, the stomata, those are hydrophobic. And because they're arranged in such nice little rows, this creates an alternating hydrophilic and hydrophobic micro pattern. Very unique pattern, and I hypothesized that this pattern would help the needle harvest moisture. So in order to test that hypothesis, I fabricated this alternating hydrophilic and hydrophobic micro pattern onto a transparency. And I compared it with just a plain hydrophilic and plain hydrophobic surface. And just put it in my humidifier, it's for my asthma, but it creates great fog, um, and just saw which one could collect more moisture within an hour. And as you can see, the water here, the micro pattern really pushes the water off of the surface. It creates a lot of mobility on the surface so that more moisture can harvest on top. And I discovered that the micro pattern, once it's optimized, actually harvests around 2.6 times more moisture than just a homogeneous hydrophilic surface, which is really, really impressive. I biomimicked that property, that micro pattern, along with several other properties of the Tory pine needle that I found through my experimentation into a moisture harvesting device. I've gone through like probably eight or nine prototypes. This is my latest one. Kind of looks like the coronavirus, um, but it's 3D printed and I'm working on field testing it and developing it. I've had the awesome opportunity to present my project at a lot of different science fairs like the Intel ISEF and the National Junior uh, Science and Humanities Symposium as well as the U.S. Stockholm Junior Water Prize. I've received some great support from the Torrey Pines Docent Society, which is essentially uh, the park rangers of Torrey Pines State Park. Look, they bake me a cake right there. They're so sweet. I've also interned at the UCSD Scripps Institute of Oceanography for one summer and developed my project there. Uh, my macro pattern and the device, those are both patent pending and I'm looking forward to hearing from the USPTO soon. Most recently, my project was featured in a National Geographic documentary series on water conservation called Join the Millions. It was super cool. They flew a drone over Torrey Pines and look, there's me right there in the documentary. 
I've also gotten the chance to talk to people at the Water Environmental Federation and the California Water Environmental Association. So overall, I am working on still publishing a paper about some of my results, still working on developing my prototype, scaling it up, and I can't wait to see it uh, be mass produced and manufactured one day. This has been a super great learning experience and I have just gained so much from my research project. Hey everyone, my project is about Nereid, a microplastic detector using laser microscopy and image processing powered by the Raspberry Pi, uh, which is designed to detect microscopic particles in water. This project began on a trip to China three years ago. When I entered the smog-filled city of Tianjin, I was really surprised to see that, first of all, nothing looked like the Forbidden City, and then after I got over that shock, we headed over to my grandparents' home, where I took a long drink of cold water from the tap. The humid weather had me extremely gross and sweaty, and I was really glad to drink some fresh water until, not an hour later, I was throwing up repeatedly. And from then on, I became far more aware about the dangers of water contamination and how many countries don't have access to clean water. I chose to research microplastics since it's a rapidly emerging contaminant that hasn't received much investigation. California is in the process of adopting a standardized testing method to monitor microplastics in drinking water. Existing industrial technologies such as dynamic light scattering, the turbidity meter, and the SDI kit are not able to efficiently measure microscopic particles less than one micron, especially in low concentrations. My device was inspired by my childhood camping nights, where I ran around in the dark with a flashlight and I saw a bunch of dust particles flying around in the air. Through testing many combinations of light sources and viewing angles, I designed Nereid, which uses a laser to illuminate solid particles in water. An 800 zoom microscope records videos of the illuminated particles, and the Raspberry Pi, which is a microcomputer, uh, powers the entire device and runs the software code that I developed. My code displays a user-friendly GUI that provides several options, including an image processing algorithm that displays histograms of the particle size and quantity. My method can detect particles as small as 5 nanometers in very low concentrations, under just 10 seconds. My next goal was to directly characterize microscopic particles, which might be beneficial for microplastic research. Using aspect ratios, which is the ratio of the length to the width of an object, I can determine the shape of the particles, and through this I can find out whether particles I see are circular or strand-like. And then finally, with a 405 nanometer laser, I can analyze the particle fluorescence emission and I can characterize different solid particle contaminants. I'm very thankful for all the support I've received. My project was awarded the national runner-up for the 2023 3M Young Scientist Challenge. 3M assigned a mentor, Dr. Jonah Shaver, to work with me over the summer to further improve my design. I also submitted a preliminary patent application. So that's my project. In the future, I hope to be able to commercialize this device and help thousands of more people. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about Clearwater Innovation, our environmental organization, and what we do. We both started off our research with $20 microscopes and began using things from around our house. I use things like tiramisu cups, um, cookie tins from last Christmas, and leftover sparkling bottled water. Yeah, I really use like the duct tape, the Legos, lots and lots of Legos, just all sorts of random stuff and random junk. And uh, also an excuse to buy more tiramisu. <laughs> um, but we just also wanted to make sure that students didn't feel limited by what resources they had, because we were able to find some really cool results just using all of that stuff. Um, we wanted students to know that if they're passionate about an environmental cause, then they have the ability to do research about it. Yeah, so that's why we founded Clearwater Innovation, and what we do is we raise awareness about the global water crisis, and we also inspire students to do garage lab research like we did. Yeah, some of my favorite events we've done in uh, the raising awareness part is uh, we did some beach cleanups, which was just a great opportunity, both social aspect and also for a great cause. We just go down to the beach with a group of students, local high school students and middle school students, and just clean up the beach and look for our sources of pollution. Yeah, and another thing that we did was host an 
uh, water and plastic art and short film competition. This reached out to over a thousand people across San Diego and we just got a whole bunch of amazing artwork that displayed the severity of plastic contamination in the ocean. And it was really great seeing how many people cared about uh, the ocean and also seeing how awesome a lot of the artwork was. Yeah, they're so talented. <laughs> so talented. And we had several generous sponsors and uh, we were able to supply our winners with monetary awards, which is super cool. Another one of my favorite events we did was the Save Water, Save Nature poster demo. We went to one of the largest after school programs in San Diego called All Star Academy and we met with dozens of elementary schoolers. We told them about the, great, uh, the global water crisis and they made posters uh, illustrating different aspects of it. So that was so much fun. The kids were really cute and super passionate. A lot of them were like so passionate about um, shortening the showers and taking steps to eat less meat and just help the environment. Another program of Clearwater Innovation is the Young Innovator Series, where we interview people we've met along our science fair journeys and we ask them about their research because they've also done some really awesome things to help the environment. We really recommend you go check that out on our YouTube channel, which is called We Impact, and you can find some cool robotics videos along with the environmental stuff. Yeah, uh, I've interviewed two winners of the U.S. Stockholm Junior Water Prize. You can learn about how my friend Zoe was able to simulate oil spills in the ocean with canola oil and how my friend Sonia dealt with a lot of dead frogs um, along the way of her sampling different water sources in New Jersey. I don't know about you, but I love reading the news and keeping up to date with what's going on in the world, so Clearwater Innovation has its own sort of like news advocacy blog section on the website, which is www.clearwaterinnovation.org. Uh, so I have my computer right here. I'm just going to scroll through and read off kind of my favorite article titles. We've got the Gulf industry and its irresponsible water consumption, the wildfire, a vicious cycle. Um, the Texas water crisis shows just how inefficient our water systems are. Change needs to occur. And does meat meet our water conservation standards? I came up with that title. I'm very proud of it. <laughs> but all of these are written by our awesome Clearwater Innovation team, uh, comprised of a, a group of students all around the U.S., all middle school and high school students. So very digestible information, and I hope you enjoy reading it as much as we do. Clearwater Innovation currently has a total of 50 members across six states. In the future, we hope to expand our organization internationally. Uh, we've already established con some connections through the Broadcom Masters Internationals, and hopefully that will allow us to uh, go to countries that have an even worse problem with water than we do here in California. Yeah, Clearwater Innovation was a finalist in the 2020 Children's Climate Prize. That is just a huge affirmation to us, and we're really grateful that people are appreciating our work and just awesome encouragement to keep on going. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about our story, but more importantly, let's talk about your story. What can you do to help the environment this Earth Day? So if you have any science project out there that you want to start, I would say just go for it. Um, feel free to email professionals because they're more than willing to help. And also you can use materials around your house. Yeah, like I was able to substitute a $1,000 micro pipette with a spray bottle literally from the dollar store. So if I can do that, any of you can do that as well. Also, be cognizant of all of the water you're using in your life. So anything you buy or eat, that all impacts the environment. All of you have a personal water footprint, and uh, there's some substitutions you can make really easily that would decrease that footprint. But at the same time, make sure you see the big picture. Uh, think about the companies and the industries that are using water really irresponsibly, because at the end of the day, all of the water that they use is drastically more than what you can conserve. So sign petitions, boycott them, etc., because they are making the biggest impact on the environment. So how can the city of Cupertino help? Well, if you're a student and you're passionate about the global water crisis, we invite you to join Clearwater Innovation. Just go to clearwaterinnovation.org, go to the bottom right corner, and you can click on the Let's Chat box and send us a message and we'll reply within a few days. 
Yeah, another way you can reach out to us if you have any questions or would like to join is you can DM me on Instagram. It's at EmmaLamaCanShe. We also have Twitter accounts that we check frequently. You can DM us there as well. So I'll put our handles on the screen. So that's all for today. Thank you so, so much for watching. And have a great Earth Day.